darlings, it's Mummy, Sybil Brunchen, and I'm here at the Copse Hill Burying Ground. Uh, it's a cemetery, uh, high, well, not high atop, but it's at the Copse Hill Heights <coughs> in the north end. Um, and this is, as you can see by the, the stones, it's an extremely old New England cemetery, certainly dating back to the 1800s, and by the shape of these stones, um, and, and the, the silhouettes of them, probably closer to the 1700s, maybe even the 16. Uh, let's look around at the architecture. You can see that there's lots of old buildings around here and lots of buildings like private little homes around this cemetery, which must be adorable, um, <coughs> which are have been refurbished and redone with glass skyscrapers in the background. This is the North End. This is part of the North End. This is near um, Little Italy, their version of Little Italy, and on the other side of this brick building right here uh, is the North Church, the famous North Church of Paul Revere. We're going to walk around here, and the reason I'm bringing you here, um, <laughs> Mummy was trying to give you kind of a funny tourette and um, kind of a, a, a black comedy tourette. Uh, this, this is Cobbs Hill. And we're coming along here, and we're coming along here. If Mummy was in a car, or in an open little carriage or something, I could walk you faster, and I could show you that the North Church is right on the other side of this, and then all those wonderful restaurants that Mummy loves. Mummy's going to walk over there, but this is what I wanted to show you. This is kind of a little uh, raised area. Look at these houses. Now, these houses date back at least to the 1800s, and as I said, some of them have silhouettes that might definitely be 1700s. You know, uh, that's very charming. Number three, Jackson Avenue, uh, with its little dormer up there. And so we'll come down these granite steps. You know, the Bostonians, they build everything to last. Granite everywhere. Anyway, look at this. Charming. Kind of San Francisco-y, isn't it, with its hills? And, you know, Boston is endlessly, endlessly scenic, in my opinion. And not just because my ancestors lived here. All right, so the reason I brought you here was this. Um, that is 529 Commercial Street down there. That vast construction area, if you could see, they've got massive granite blocks and uh, they've dug up everything. That was a baseball field and a sports field uh, until just recently. Uh, as a matter of fact, Google hasn't caught up with them yet or Wikipedia. This must be a recent project. I don't know what this is, but it's very deadly looking. It looks like the sort of thing that one would throw one's children on. Um, anyway, so uh, here we have this wonderful vista. You could see the uh, Constitution in the distance and um, the Bunker Hill Monument. And, and there's the uh, residence inn that Mummy has stayed at before when she gave you a tour of the Constitution. Um, that's not what I'm trying to show you here. Uh, again, if we were over there at the Residence Inn, which is right there, and the Constitution and all of that area, you would turn around here and you would see the steeple of the North Church behind that brick building. Again, not important. This is what is important. <laughs> it was almost 101 years ago today. So it was January 15th, 1919, at about 12.30, which is about this exact time, and um, so 101 years ago, uh, on this very site, there was a five, six-story high, uh, I, I don't know, a tank, I guess you would call it, a giant round tank, like for gas and uh, oil and everything. And this was very industrial down here. People didn't care about the Italians and the, and the immigrants. Uh, this was all very funky sort of neighborhoods. Um, so it was, it was all very sketchy and, and all of that, and very industrial. And uh, the ships would come ashore here and would uh, unload their goods or their fuel or whatever. And at that time, they, Boston was a major molasses and sugar stop for the United States. As a matter of fact, to its, its uh, shame, it was part of the triangle uh, trade of the 16, 17, and 1800s, the slave trade. So uh, sugar and molasses would be brought 
uh, to Boston and then it would be turned into rum and then it would be shipped out of here. The, the New England was a big distilling area of the country. So uh, later on, of course, with uh, bootlegging, uh, Boston and Provident Providence, Rhode Island figured very largely into the whole bootlegging uh, you know, scandals uh, and the and the, um, <laughs> the whole gangster thing was <laughs> gigantic. Boston figured very, John Kennedy, John Kennedy's father, uh, Joseph Kennedy figured very much into that. Bootlegging was huge here. Anyway, mummy's getting tongue-tied because I'm trying to tell you what, what happened here. On January 15th, at about 12 in the afternoon, uh, right around midday, I guess it was, there happened to be a warm, uh, a little warm spell like there is right now. And the six-story high uh, tank uh, that was right on the waterfront here um, was filled with molasses. Thousands and thousands and thousands of tons of molasses. Uh, it was stored here. Ethanol was not the alcohol um, byproduct, which would come off the distilling of this. And that was another part of the, the uh, situation. Anyway, the tank collapsed. The uh, metal was not strong enough to support that much weight. It was not structurally built properly. And it released that molasses not only into the harbor, but out into the... Uh, the village and um, this part of the of the Boston waterfront. Uh, it sounds funny um, to think of that molasses, but the wave that it released was about uh, 50 feet high initially, and it moved at about 35, 40 miles an hour, like a car, and it literally swept hundreds and hundreds of people, horses, dogs, cats, trees, carriages. Uh, cars, everything. It ran into the elevated train, uh, and I believe it knocked over one of the uh, the trolley cars. Um, it killed at least 21 people that they know of. Um, they didn't find all the missing people, and uh, they found missing people in the harbor and, and the water uh, as late as three months later, four months later in the spring. Um, it it buried literally. Uh, it injured 150 people, and it destroyed buildings. It was massive, massive. And because it was molasses, and because it was not uh, warm weather, it began to harden, and uh, it was impossible to get people and animals and whatever out of it. Um, it, it was a catastrophe. The Bostonians... Uh, were horrified. The nation was horrified. Um, but it didn't stop people from <laughs> immediately joking about it uh, in a rueful way, in a satirical way, and calling it the Boston Malassacre. Um, and it was a source of um, dramatic changes in lawsuits, uh, civil suits against corporations at that time, uh, which was very significant because basically uh, major companies got away with whatever they wanted. Um, seven years earlier, the Titanic catastrophe, uh, there was almost no uh, financial you know, financial settlement that was satisf satisfactory to the survivors or the families of people who were lost. So, this was significant. This was a significant place. And apparently, Boston, of course, you know, completely, there were, first of all, the demolition had been done in 1919 all along there. These buildings survived um, or were probably rebuilt, sort of, or repaired. Um, buildings down by the water were gone. Um, and uh, so anyway, it's all been changed and this uh, baseball field and this sports field, which was here up until just recently, uh, was one of the city projects. It's gone. Apparently it's being rebuilt or something. Boston's doing something with it. And uh, I guess the plaque will go back. Anyway, I wanted to bring you here. I'm sorry I was so inarticulate today. It's a little shivery out here, but I wanted to show you the area and show you a little piece of history. How much can change in just 101 years? Last year, they had the anniversary on January 15th, um, and they had a whole um, public uh, ceremony here, uh, re-affirming uh, the incident and what it caused and the, and the, the sorrow that it caused. And they had uh, city fathers gather on the concrete base, which still existed out there somewhere, and I'm not sure where it is now. Maybe they tore it up. It was about two feet below the grass, and they had the city fathers stand on it in a giant circle, 
uh, hold hands and everyone could see where the initial uh, tank was and the size of it. Um, I don't know where that is now, and I don't know if they tore it up. Perhaps they, they demolished it. Although, wouldn't it be funny if that little concrete right there, the runners just went by it. The caterpillar is about to go. I wonder if that's part of it there behind that hill of dirt. Anyway, uh, interesting. History is interesting. 101 years. My God. Some things are gone. Some things are there. There's the SS Constitution, you know. Anyway, all right, have a good day, darlings. There's a Tourette for you, a rather macabre one, a long one, long-winded, I'm sorry. But uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. Bostonians, it's a great city, isn't it? All right, love you, darlings. Bye-bye.